Hi there everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach. Welcome to another one of my album reviews. If you're one of my regular viewers, you know where this is going. It's time to finish Rammstein. Sorry, okay. That'll be the last time I'll be doing that until we do another Rammstein album, which means there'll have to be another new album. Quite a few things I want to cover on this review. All right, first things first. I missed one major crucial detail when, in my last review where I covered the Rammstein album, or I'm going to call it the Matchstick album. And the major part I missed is the 10 years. 10 years! Uh, what was it? Oh, this is what happens when I'm horrible with album or with uh, German names. Okay, Le Lieb ist für Alda was released in 2009. Okay, I've covered that album. That is the album that's got pussy on it. I'm gonna see if I can maybe not get in trouble for this review. Um, from there until the Rammstein album, which was released in 2019, there was 10 years. Going to this new album, we only had to wait three, and that is for Zeit. Now, this is one of those albums that I am affectionately referring to as a COVID album. And I've actually covered a few albums that I classify as COVID albums this year. Believe it or not, this is the seventh brand new released in 2002 album I've covered. I do have another one that is coming up. I've got the new Jack White album. He did two this year. And speaking of Jack White, he's one of the ones I covered already this year. He's got another one that came out this year. Neither of those albums would I classify as COVID albums. This is a COVID album. Um, I covered Hailstorms Back from the Dead. I'm calling that a COVID album. Uh, Billy Talent's Crisis of Faith, not a COVID album. Kirk Hammett's solo album Portals, not a COVID album. Red Hot Chili Peppers Unlimited Love, uh, that might have been a bit of a COVID album. Not entirely, but a bit of a COVID album. And Rammstein's Zeit is a COVID album. Now, what do I mean by COVID album? When you listen to the album, the album feels kind of really... One way, it feels kind of very stock. Kind of like, you know, the band was just bored and needed to kill time. And since they couldn't go out touring or anything like that, they went into the studio. The other thing that goes with that is that means there's some experimenting in there, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. This album doesn't have what I would consider too much experimentation on it. It feels a little more like kind of just falling back into a default position for them, which isn't bad and in every review I have covered from Ramstein so far I have said that there is no such thing as a bad Ramstein album or bad Ramstein song I still stand by that but this is actually the first album that I'm a little so-so about I'm gonna get to that a little bit more in a second so this album's kind of weird compared to other Ramstein albums for me specifically in the sense that this album is more heavy handed to me with tracks you want to hear on the back half of the album and the front half of the album is a little more meh and they are doing a few of these tracks of this album live, and a few of them I actually look forward to hearing live. I, I think it's going to be kind of fun to hear them live. But, I'm not... 
I think this album might need time to grow on me. I'm giving all this detail away at the beginning before we even get into the songs. Um, I might need more time for this album to grow on me than I've had. I mean, I've listened to it quite a bit. And I can already tell you that it's not an album I'm going to listen to anywhere near as much as some of their other catalog. You know, uh, Mutter will still be in my CD player a million times more than this will ever end up back in my CD player. Uh, Senshut, um, Reise Reise, even uh, Rammstein, which, you know, I wasn't the hugest fan of. I mean, I don't mind it, but when it's an album that has to grow on you instead of just kind of grabbing you by the cojones right away, you know, like, Harold Zide, I don't listen to Harold Zide a shit ton, but I listen to it a fair amount. You know, Mutter goes in still pretty regularly. Liebes for Alda, that one actually goes in quite often. Um, Ariza Ariza goes in quite often. Uh, I've already mentioned Senshut, you know, so those go in pretty often. I honestly don't see this one going in very often. Uh, give me a second. We're going to get into the reasons why I'm going to start talking about this. All right. All right. So here we're going to go. We're going to get into the tracks here. Uh, Arme de Tristan. This is actually the opening live track. Even the opening track to the album is also the opening live track. Uh, it translates to army of the forlorn. <sighs> It's, out of every song, every album Rammstein's ever opened up with, th this is the most cliche. Uh, I, I don't find it, I don't find it all that impressive in all honesty. I don't find it a bad, like it's not a bad tune. It's just, like if I were just discovering Rammstein, I'd probably dig the song a way more than I do. But as an old school hardcore fan, it's pretty basic. You know, it's nothing, it's nothing to write home about. That's, that's just me. Uh, that is followed up by the album's title track, Zeit. Uh, now, this means time, and there's definitely a continuing vibe throughout this album, a uh, passage of, with the passage of time and getting older and dealing with getting older and whatnot. As I've mentioned in other reviews, this album... I mean, at this point, Rammstein has honestly been around for 26 years. You know, their first album was released in 1996. They are eligible for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They have put in their time. And, you know, now, this is definitely a slower track. And they've done a lot of other slower tracks. I... They're doing this one live. And they're doing this one live based off of every set list I've looked at. It looks like this one's always coming in after Hairat or Mish, which is a good time to have it come in. Because you, and then right after that is supposed to be Deutschland. So this is the perfect song to put in there. Um, it kind of, the best way to describe it would be Mutter. If you've heard, you know, if you've never listened to this album and, you're wondering what this song sounds like. The closest would be Mutter, and that's that's not 100% on, but that gives you a rough idea. Uh, next track up is Schwoz, which um, means dark. It's an alright song. It, it, it's, it's next in line on the album. It, it fills its place. It is a, it's, it's a standard Rammstein track. It's kind of weird because, you know, the, this is the seventh studio album. If I'm doing the math correctly, hold on. Yeah, 
Yeah. No, eighth. Ninth. No. Seventh studio album. Yeah. Okay. So, not including the Greatest Hits album. And yes, there is a Greatest Hits album out there. Um, and I didn't cover it because I covered all the albums. And I don't remember if there was an extra track or two on the Greatest Hits album. Um, I might get back to that. I might borrow my son's copy and cover that later on. Because uh, I actually, it's one of the few Rammstein albums he owns because I bought it for him. I found the greatest hits and I picked it up for him. All right, anyways, um, I'm getting way off topic. So, this is their seventh studio album, and at this point, I'm just kind of, meh. You know, like, I, I was really hoping for both some new experimentalism mixed with the cooler parts of the older Einstein and this doesn't have the passion, the energy, the, the drive, the whoa, that a lot of the older stuff does. Even when it has some of the heavier songs on here, it still feels like the band has gotten older. Uh, every band goes through that phase, right? You know, where they just kind of slow down a little bit and they take a little time back whatever, depending on the band, you know, it happens. Anyways, uh, Schwal's just kind of, that's where it goes with me. After that, we get into Giftig, which means toxic, and this is probably one of the few Rammstein songs I'll ever say that I would honestly just skip. I'm not a... It really does nothing for me, thankfully. It's like the shortest song on the album. Uh, after that, we get into Zigzag, which is, it sounds a lot of the time like they're saying TikTok, but they actually say TikTok or TikTok next. So I think it's just the way he says Zigzag. It sounds like TikTok. Um, and Zigzag means zigzag. R roughly translated, I guess, based off of what I hear. And basically, um, going with that whole passage of time stuff like that, it's a song all about plastic surgery. And, you know, it, you got to watch the music video. The music video is so twisted and, and wild and great. But it's, it's also, you know, shows that this song is not meant to be... It really sounds like it's telling chicks that they have to do more to make themselves better, but that's not what they're trying to get at. It's actually quite the opposite. They're, you know, it's kind of satirically looking at the world of plastic surgery and everybody trying to make themselves look better. After that, we get to the track OK. OK is actually short for on condom. And that translates to no condom. And uh, for me... After this song coming out years after Till Lindemann's solo album with the song Abort on it, or Praise Abort, sorry, um, I, I really think that sometimes, I mean, you can say this about a lot of Ramshine songs, but sometimes Till kind of gets locked into these kind of concepts needs to get dragged out of them a little bit. Um, and, you know, musically, it's your basic Rammstein song. You know, that, that's it. Um, Main Training, My Tears. Um, <sighs> Lyrically, this is some weird mama influence song um mama's boy kind of song and i don't mean in in a bad way i mean like you know i i just you know you live for your mom kind of thing it's really weird yeah uh lyrically i'm once again it's it's kind of your basic kind of Einstein kind of song uh, next up is Angst. Decent tune. They did a video for it. It's pretty cool. I dig the video. Um, I like the idea behind 
the lyrics. Basically, it's, you know, the idea of, well, you know, where angst, your angst comes from, this fear of doing something wrong, the fear of the boogeyman, you know, stuff like that, especially growing up in Germany. And I mean, these guys were in Germany growing up as children. Well, you know, Germany was still East and West divided, you know, so they, they grew up in a, in an interesting time still where they would have seen, you know, some really nasty shit right up front and center. It's, it's, you know, not something I would necessarily call a great thing. You know what I'm saying here? And, and you know, th this is honestly now when I'm saying angst, they, they don't change the, um, the title up there. So it's still kind of angst, but, when you translate the lyrics, it's, uh, Wer hat Angst von Schwozen Mann? And that roughly translate to who is scared of the boogeyman. And you can still feel the angst in the song. I'm just going to leave it at that, you know? <laughs> So the way it's weird the way the things translate and go and whatnot and those little tiny nuances kind of thing you can still call the song angst still is all about angst still about being scared and still about being fearful and whatnot because of all the crap that's happened but <laughs> all right Every Rammstein album kind of has to have that one song, sexual song, that's, you know, funny or humorous or, you know, is just completely immature. And Dick Titten is, is the next song. Now, Dick Titten, <laughs> just the name alone makes me laugh. Because, it, it, you, you know, if you look at this and you're English, you're just like, oh, God, they're talking about dick and tits. They got to be talking about dick and tits. <sighs> and the reality is, is they're at least talking about tits. <laughs> According to this, Dick uh, Titten, Dick uh translates to big tits. And... <laughs> Basically, the chorus comes down more or less to she doesn't have to be cute. She doesn't have to be smart. No, she doesn't have to be rich nor a model with long legs yet with big tits. Well, it's not the chorus, but kind of the chorus because the, the, the choruses change up a little bit, you know, lyrically. Because another one is, is, you know, she doesn't have to be cute. She doesn't have to be smart. No, she doesn't have to be rich. But I like to ask for just one thing. Big tits. If you watch the video, totally, totally, absolutely, oh my God, the video is great. Now, musically, okay, remember when I said, like, when you get to the back half of the album, it starts getting good. Now, Zeit isn't a bad tune, I don't mind it, and like I said, as a motto replacement, kind of, in the way that it, it works musically... It's great. I'm okay with that. Uh, and then you, you... Zigzag's not bad. And then when you hit angst, the album starts getting, you know, really, to me, starts kind of sounding cool and picking up a little bit. Angst is still not quite, you know, thundering. But it's still pretty good. Um, Deke Teton, this one... This one, the music in it, the way they blend uh, good old horns and stuff like that in here and give it kind of a classic German kind of vibe. I don't want to say polka-esque, but kind of a smidgy, you know, that classic German. Now, you know what I'm talking about. You know, that stuff you're going to hear at, you know, freaking Oktoberfest, okay? That's that's what I'm talking about here. You got that classic kind of Oktoberfest-y kind of sound going on in there. And then, and when you watch the video, yeah, it kind of keeps going. Um, and it just goes from there, and it's great. It's, it's wonderful. I, I very thoroughly in, 
enjoy it musically that way. Uh, next one up is Lugan. Lugan? I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that properly, which translates to lies. Um, this one's a little too slow for me. At this point, a lot of the album's kind of been a little pulled back, a little bit slower, not as old school aggressive as you would get with Rammstein, not as heavy and overly whoa as you, you, you get with Rammstein. More subdued. And at this point with this song, it, it, it I've been subdued enough. So I just don't want to be subdued anymore. And that I'm going to go from there, and that rolls directly into the last song, which is really, really funny. Because the next song is also slow, but the song is Adieu. And it is... One, is the perfect closer for an album, lyrically. Uh, Music-wise, Rammstein always closes on a slightly slower one. This one's more of a crowd one, though. This one was designed for being played live. This was designed to be the song at the end of the night. There's almost a small part of me that, you know, wonders if, you know, uh, Till Lindemann, when he got COVID, actually got hit really badly with it. I don't know for sure. Because this is really kind of, this is a death song when you look at the lyrics. You know, it's, uh, farewell, goodbye, see you soon. You must take the last road on your own. One last song, one last kiss. There will be no miracle. Farewell, goodbye, see you soon. That moment with you was great. You know, and then next, that that's basically the chorus. And then the, one of the middle verses is, you're quietly flying away from life. Your soul is undertaking a so silent journey. Body decaying, mind rising up, and the spirit will surrender to death, yes. In the end, you're by yourself, but we'll be there with you. Farewell, goodbye, see you soon. <sighs> Great way to close it out. It really is. Um, okay, so this is also the one of the special edition versions. This is what the actual album cover looked like on the CD. Um, pictures. Pictures. I wish I could say there was a lot of cool stuff in the book. Um, there, there... I like the artwork and it's done really cool. And, you know, as an Amstein fan, I'm clearly going to buy the bonus stuff because, you know, I'm a fan. I'm one of those fans. So, you know, whenever I've got a choice between the regular stuff or the bonus, I buy the bonus. But don't go buying the big bonus if you're just getting into them. You're not going to have a proper appreciation for it. I mean, you can buy it to say that you have it go for it that way but honestly just get the regular album that's all you need okay folks uh this one ran long you also got two different videos in the same day because you heard about all the computer problems if you're one of my regular viewers um so the way i can line this up to get both albums out the same day i'm doing the concert is to put this one out, which means you're watching this on the Sunday, August 21st, which means I am going to see Rammstein live tonight. If you're watching this anytime after August 21st, that means I saw Rammstein after you saw this video. <laughs> or after I, you know, yeah, never mind. I'm pre-recording this ahead of time, though. That's, that's actually the funny part. I'm actually recording this a week ahead of time. Um, so I have everything all pre-planned out and I don't have to worry about it afterwards. Okay. I've rambled. I've said more than enough. Leave me your comments. Let me know what you think about this album. Maybe you like it better than me. There's a possibility there are going to be people out there that like it better than me. Uh, my views on this one, I, I think are just really based off being an old school fan who's been into Rammstein for as long as I have. I think that if you've been into Rammstein for less time than I have, you're going to have a different view than I, ha I do, possibly. Or if this is your first album, your first Rammstein album, man. I, I don't want to bum you out and make it sound like garbage. I just want to tell you, go to the back catalog, man. Go to the back catalog. All right. That's everything, folks. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think.
Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell for notifications. There's a link down below that will take you over to my Patreon where you can throw me a few bucks if you want. Otherwise, peace, love, take care. One more time. Ram Stein.